Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and all. Today we have epidemiology of dental caries. So this will be uh, into three parts. The first part is basic epidemiology and other details. The second part is uh, epidemiology and dental caries. That is the historical studies or the epidemiological studies which proved dental caries is caused by or it is uh, connected to diet and the third part is uh, sugar substitutes so let's see what are the three factors of uh, epidemiology so epidemiology the definition uh, we know we have learned uh, that is uh, distribution and determinants of health states or events in specified population and application to control this particular disease and the dental caries definition is irreversible microbial disease of calcified tissues which is characterized by demineralization of inorganic and destruction of organic which leads to cavitation so caries is derived from latin word rot means decay uh, it, uh, it literally means uh, death. So it is a multifactorial disease and this is known as disease of modern civilization because it was uh, very rare in the previous era. After the civilization, the dental caries is becoming a pandemic. So there is always a caries balance is happening in our mouth. The protective factors are saliva, uh, the antimicrobials, fluorides and effective diet. So it tries to protect our teeth but at the same time bacteria, uh, xerostomia that is absence of saliva and other dietary habits that is uh, excess consumption of uh, sucrose will always try to produce caries. So this balance is very important. So more we uh, concentrate on the protective factors, caries will not happen. And uh, once the balance is lost, caries will occur. So we have various theories of caries formation. The most common one is Miller's chemical parasitic theory. So there were many theories behind this. Uh, behind uh, before this uh, Miller's theory, uh, the most uh, Famous series Miller's chemical parasite that is bacteria sugar plus teeth becoming organic acid and dental caries. Then proteolytic theory by Gottlieb that is organic portion um, by destruction by proteolytic organisms. Proteolytic chelation theory by Schwartz et al. There will be a chelation process happening. So gross chelation theory by Aguilar Flora 1967. And few other theories like autoimmune theory by Birch and Jackson. So this is a primological triad by Keyes in 1960. So we have learned a primological triad in our concept of causation. So there will be three factors that is host, agent and environment. So host is always the teeth. Agent is outside organism that is microorganism. Environment is the diet and many other factors. So in agent factors, we have microorganisms, dental plaque, diet and nutrition. So so here it is mentioned in uh, environment, it comes under agent also. So in host factors, race, age, sex, familial history, socioeconomic status, quality and quantity of tooth, environment, fluoride, race elements, social factors, geographic variations, urbanization. So there is a tetrad uh, explanation of this epidemiology uh, called triad by Neubrun in 1982. So he had a time factor uh, to this triad and it became tetrad. So always epidemiological uh, triad 
cannot uh, fully explain the dental caries mechanism so he had a time factor uh, because um, it always involves a time um, because the sucrose should be there at oral cavity for a particular period of time for this acid production otherwise the caries will not happen so time is important factor so it Newbrun uh, added this time in 1982 so it became tetrad instead of triad so host factors are race ethnicity age sex family history emotional disturbance diet and socioeconomic status tooth and saliva so race and ethnicity there is global variation caries experience uh, results from environmental factors rather than inherent racial attributes so belong to one uh, particular race will not give any particular any immunity to dental caries so it is based on the other factors not uh, due to the racial uh, attributes uh, because some racial groups once thought to resistance to caries but actually it was uh, due to their dietary pattern age there are three peaks of increase in age that is 4 to 8 years 11 to 90 years and 55 to 65 years so these years are involved with new eruption of many teeth so that's why it's known as this age is for root caries becoming a disease of lifetime so coronal caries is streptococcus mutants are mainly involved and root caries acnomyces root caries is common in older age sex has shown that females have more caries uh, root caries is more common in males why females are in more caries because the early eruption of teeth morphological differences and their increased fondness of sweets and also due to hormonal changes family history it is said that good or bad teeth run in family so there is a familial uh, or a genetic element which is involved in uh, dental caries uh, because it has proven in study that uh, the, actually it is not the genetics but the same pattern of uh, teeth that is morphology occlusion salivary flow and other factors which involving um, the caries pattern and family rather than the uh, genetics by itself so emotional disturbance stress is always associated with high caries incidence because they do not take sufficient self-care if people who are under stress just like the schizophrenic patients because there will be reduced caries, uh, sorry, reduced caries. Uh, schizophrenic is opposite because um, there is a reduced caries, which is due to the increased salivation and high pH of saliva. So I was talking about the stress factor. When uh, stress is there, people tend not to take care of their teeth. Schizophrenic due to the excessive saliva production so diet and nutrition malnutrition is always associated with hypoplastic teeth so in turn it leads to dental caries sucrose is known as arch criminal vitamin d deficiency also a causative factor for hypoplasia which causes or which can attribute to development of caries socioeconomic status is like low socioeconomic status more decayed and more missing component uh, in high socioeconomic status they can afford more treatment so filling component is more so around 1960 after the introduction of fluoride what happens is the higher socioeconomic groups they can afford toothpaste and other fluoride products so caries were uh, reported less in that group and nowadays caries is seen uh, most commonly in poverty and it is becoming a social behavioral disease because uh, lower uh, socio-economic groups uh, are not able to do a proper oral hygiene measures so uh, that is uh, becoming a part of a social and behavioral um, pattern and nowadays it is commonly seen among the lower strata of society so time factors this was the most important thing we had seen uh, the dental caries was most 
common among uh, 4 to 8, 11 to 18 uh, age groups because those period of time there were so many teeth uh, newly erupted into the oral cavity. So these newly erupted teeth are not very much mineralized. There is still mineralization left. Post eruptive mineralization will happen within two to three years. So this period is very critical and caries will be uh, more common during this period of time. So tooth factor it has uh, like uh, we know this composition enamel has 96 percentage inorganic and uh, dentine has 65 percentage cementum has 45 percentage. So enamel, dentine, cementum tooth position is uh, important because if it is malaligned out of position rotated uh, such cases there will be more caries because of the uh, oral hygiene measures won't be accurate or proper in this uh, scenario. Dental caries of primary teeth uh, most commonly mandibular molars are affected than maxillary molars than maxillary anteriors. Least were seen around uh, in lower incisors. Permanent teeth uh, which is mandibular first and second molars then maxillary first and second molars mandibular premolars for the maxillary premolars likewise the mandibular central lateral and canines are least caries reported teeth saliva which has uh, directly connected to caries regarding the flow rate because if a good flow is there uh, there will be um, less caries if flow is less because it is more there will be more caries so these are the saliva constituents so pH increases with flow rate. So decrease pH, more caries, increase pH, less caries. So quantity, thick mucinous saliva is always associated with high caries incidence. And if there is a lack of adequate um, saliva production, there will be more caries because saliva flow will be reduced in xerostomia or other conditions. So there will be more caries. And antibacterial properties are there in saliva like lactoperosidase which limits early microbial colonization and lysozyme which degrades negatively charged peptidoglycan matrix. Lactoferrin and IgA. Lactoferrin is an iron binding basic protein uh, which tends to bind and limit the amount of free iron. IgA is immunoglobulin present in saliva which prevents colonization of bacteria. So agent factor we have microflora and diet. So diet we have already uh, seen in our host factor. Okay, so host factor already we have covered this diet. Uh, so the same uh, diet can be put into host and agent factor because diet is uh, like nutrition and diet uh, we cannot uh, keep in a one category because it is interlinked to host and agent factors so microflora we know what bacteria causes dental caries disruptive focus mutus mutants and saliva and other factors and what they do is uh, they produce acids and causes the mineralization so streptococcus mutants starts the caries lactobacillus associated with dental caries because it is both acidogenic and aciduric it can produce acid it can withstand at a acidic um, environment but streptococcus mutants cannot uh, withstand a, uh, an aerobic condition uh, so that as the caries causes deep into the cavity there will be uh, less uh, oxygen content so the streptococcus mutants will be replaced by lactobacillus because it is aciduric. Acnomycosis uh, are always uh, seen in root caries. So that uh, the content, the carbohydrate and vitamin content is important because the fermentation happens by the presence of bacteria on the plaque and produces demineralization and caries. Physical nature is more uh, sticky uh, content uh, and less easy to be cleansed uh, such materials will cause more caries 
so because the diet of primitive man always associated with roughage content uh, which is very less in modern diet because modern diet is soft and refined food so it will cling to the teeth and is not easy to get removed so more case in seen in uh, modern uh, civilized people so sucrose is known as arch criminal because the amount of pro acid produced from one unit of sucrose is very large compared to the other forms of carbohydrate such as fructose galactose so vitamin a is important because it is involved with the development of teeth if it is deficient there will be uh, chances of caries similarly vitamin d uh, vitamin d is associated with formation of uh, enamel so lack of these uh, vitamins uh, enhance the caries formation similarly vitamin k is an anti caries agent it has an enzymatic inhibiting activity so vitamin b6 also uh, anti caries agent calcium and phosphorus so this calcium and phosphorus metabolism is important because if it is not adequately obtained there will be hypoplasia similarly fluoride we have seen in our fluoride chapter how fluoride prevents dental caries so good fluoride uh, content means there will be uh, low caries incidence which is commonly available in tea leaves fish so this diet and dental caries uh, epidemiological studies i'll be covering in my next video so let's move on to the environmental factors that is the last factors we have covered agent and host factors so environmental factors is a tricky part because it has no good scientific evidence to prove all these factors it comes uh, major it comes under major geographic variations urbanization nutrition and social factors okay so uh, latitude distance from sea coast sunshine temperature humidity rainfall flow rate many things are coming here let's see the latitude it is said that pe people living near equator uh, having less caries compared to um, away from equator people who lives uh, near the sea coast are having more caries and if we go away from sea coast less caries sunshine it is associated with vitamin d less sunshine uh, more caries or you get more sunshine less caries uh, like i said there is no um, direct uh, link between uh, these factors and dental caries so temperature people with uh, cold temperatures tend to consume more baked food so more caries humidity shows higher correlation with caries prevalence because uh, humidity more the moisture the atmosphere will block the uv rays and sunlight so it is affecting um, our teeth formation and increase caries activity so rainfall uh, it acts by leaching of minerals including fluoride from the soil and blocking the sunlight so rainfall and humidity are linked to dental caries prevalence or it causes increase fluoride you know it prevents dental caries water hardness Mm, there is an inverse relationship selenium trace element selenium increases caries whereas molybdenum decreases caries so urbanization we know that higher caries goes in urban areas due to the higher consumption of refined foodstuffs so nutrition we have already seen how nutrients are affecting so the nutrients is coming everywhere as we see it is uh, interlinked mm, into the environmental host and agent factors so it is included under the environmental factors as geographical cultural education factors might influence food availability and in turn might contribute to increasing or decreasing caries in social factors the economic status is uh, a determining uh, thing because uh, if economic status is well uh, uh, the patient's affordability and his uh, provision for good preventive measures are good uh, definitely there will be less chances of caries compared to the uh, other group of economic strata uh, the dental care is uh, quite expensive so 
the affordability is a very um, a very determining factor in the prevalence of dental caries so let's see how do we prevent dental caries at various levels so we have seen this primary secondary and tertiary levels we have learned this levels of prevention and modes of intervention so health promotion specific protection early diagnosis and prompt treatment disability limitation and rehabilitation so in primary prevention we can do health promotion and specific protection so we can uh, adopt an individual approach a dental professional or a community approach so by individual we can plan our diet uh, we can uh, do the periodic dental visit so in specific protection what uh, individual can do is we can use fluoridated prescriptions dentifrices uh, proper use of uh, other fluoride products but a dental professional can educate the patient he can counsel the patient and he can uh, topical fluoride he can do topical fluoride application under specific protection and he can apply bit and fissure sealants whereas a community can prevent the dental caries by conducting uh, programs promotional activities and legislation specific protection we can do community water fluoridation or school water or other sealant school sealant programs so this comes under primary prevention this is commonly asked question how to prevent dental caries at various levels but secondary prevention as we discussed in our concept of prevention disease already occurred so we have to detect the disease at very early stage like person can do self-examination and also can visit a dentist whereas dental professional can uh, complete uh, do a complete examination and uh, treatment of the early lesions that is incipient lesions and can do PRR and very simple restorative procedures and even pulp capping community can do a periodic screening process but tertiary means uh, the disease has already uh, gone to a very severe stage so individual can uh, seek for a dental service um, whereas a dental professional need to do complex restorative procedures like pulpotomy rct and extraction uh, community can again uh, send for the patients for treatment rehabilitation uh, in dental professional need to rehabilitate using rpd or fpd or other uh, things so this is like uh, levels of prevention of dental caries at various levels that is primary secondary to show this comes under all the uh, main uh, diseases like periodontal disease uh, oral cancer so this is how prevent uh, systematically and scientifically a disease so that is all about prevention so the video uh, includes epidemiology of dental caries uh, various factors agent host and environmental factors and the levels of prevention so it's a simple chapter uh, not much complicated uh, diet comes in uh, all the factors that is interconnected and epidemiological triad later uh, advanced uh, to a epidemiological triad the fourth factor time has introduced by newborn because time is a big element in formation of dental caries so that's all about epidemiology of dental caries the second part of this video includes diet and dental caries that is the epidemiological studies which has proven uh, how the diet is a causative factor or how diet is linked to dental caries and another part is uh, sugar substitutes so there are three parts for this epidemiology of dental caries so thank you for watching uh, i'll come up with the epidemiology of dental caries uh, part two the diet and epidemiological studies okay thank you